Yo, 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 what it is, what it does, what it do, what it be, it's your boy, A-N-T, repping the game, gang, you know we don't play, none of that, all of that, coming back with another episode of Hip Hop History, yeah, we got some Hogwarts gameplay going, this game going crazy, this Wizarding World, I ain't never played none of the games, I, I, I think I said I read some of the books in, in like, elementary school type shit that's how that's how old i am y'all but uh <laughs> that's not what i'm talking about today today i'm gonna be giving flowers to all of the women pioneers in hip-hop that paved the way for women rap artists to be the superstars that they are today and yes i said superstars all rap beef aside to act like Nicki minaj cardi b and meg the stallion those three in particular to even pretend like even one of those aren't superstars in their own right is just delusional anytime you have stands like random people who you've never met or you know you who don't you don't know personally are defending you in droves like the beehive type shit you know you know you popping you, you're a superstar you got a different there's levels to fame and that's definitely another level you feel me so I mean, and that's not just one of the, that's not the whole reason why they superstars. I mean, they global, international superstars, they are recognized worldwide type shit. You feel I me? Mean, there's not a lot of people on the planet who don't know uh, who Meg Thee Stallion, Cardi B, and Nicki Minaj are. And then, uh, even without them, you still have female MCs like Jean Grey, Remy Ma, Eve, Gangsta Boo, G Glorilla, Young M.A., Doja Cat, and even, you know, Snow the Product. They are all talented and successful in their own rights. But let's go back to the OGs of it all because women have always been a part of hip-hop culture. And I talked previously about uh, Sylvia Robinson and how she was instrumental, no pun intended, on producing hip-hop's first two hit records, Rapper's Delight and The Message. So it was actually a woman who was responsible for hip hop breaking into the mainstream as a genre and for the most part hip hop in its infancy was a male dominated genre and it pretty much still is that way but woman MCs are much more accepted today than they were in the beginning and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. But yes, yeah, Sylvia Robinson was a key figure behind the scenes in hip hop as her and her husband operated Sugar Hill Records which at the time was one of the only record labels signing rappers but when it comes to women being on the forefront of hip-hop and being MCs and getting on wax and it, it all starts with a woman by the name of Sharon Green aka MC Shaw Rock and she's even referred to as the mother of the mic cementing her role as hip-hop's first lady Shaw Rock started as a b-girl and eventually shifted to becoming an MC. Uh, her mom had taught her about poetry slams and took her to some and how cadence was very important for spoken word and eventually Shaw Rock would participate in local ciphers which back then she said they were called they were called jams which were basically get-togethers and parties usually at a park and Sharon would make a name for herself at these ciphers as a fierce female MC who had bars, you feel me? And she auditioned for a spot in a new group that Sugar Hill Records was backing called the Funky Four Plus One. And the group had two significant hits called Rappin' and Rockin' the House, as well as That's the Joint, the latter of which was performed by the Funky Four Plus One on SNL, which Shaw Rock performed with the group while she was pregnant. So not only was she, you know, the first woman to ever, you know, get on wax, she was the first woman MC to bring hip hop to mainstream national television. And, and, and shout out to Saturday Night Live. They heard hip hop. I don't even think they knew what it was going to be at the time. They just knew, you know, they liked this group or whatever. They had a hit and they wanted to perform. And it was legend. It's a legendary performance in terms of hip hop history. That you know, being on SNL. I mean, granted, SNL wasn't SNL as we know it today. This big thing, but for it to be for hip hop to be in its infancy and to grow along, like that's how long it's been running. As long as SNL, 
and look at how popular i mean both are but i mean look at how global hip-hop is as a genre i mean it's nate it uh, you might go somewhere uh outside of america and they might not know about saturday night live they might know about some of the comedians maybe i'm maybe i'm tripping maybe saturday night live is just popping everywhere but it's i would argue and i would wager any amount of money that hip-hop is more popular than saturday night live on a global scale but i mean it's, it's crazy how that's where it, it all kind of started that's the first hip-hop performance on snl and i mean the first woman was a, was a part of that or the you know one of the first woman mc female mc was a part of that so not only does she deserve flowers she deserves a spot on the mount rushmore in terms of being a founding mother of hip-hop because that's really i mean mount rushmore's have have grown nowadays into this whole debate on who's the best and really the mount rushmore is not an ode to the four best americans who ever lived that's not what mount rushmore is so i don't really understand that whole argument concept debate or concept for argument and debate so i uh, if we're putting around a uh, Mount Rushmore of people or uh, of women who were, you know, the forefathers or foremothers, I should say, of hip hop, then that's really what, it, you know, that's what it should be for. Or, you know, the founders or so, of something. But that's just my two cents. I, I digress. So... Like I said, she deserves that Mount Rushmore spot in in terms of being a founding mother of hip hop. And even though the Funky Four Plus One never reached uh, high levels of success or had longevity in the game, Shah Rock set the bar high for any woman who wanted to be an MC. And one woman who decided to pick up a mic also picked up right where Shah Rock left off, and she is none other than. Lolita Shantae Gooden, aka Roxanne Shantae, who I've talked about before when I talked about the Bridge Wars, and her diss to UTFO took the beef between DJ Red Alert and Mr. Magic, uh, which were two of New York's premier hip hop DJs and really the only ones playing hip hop on the radio anywhere at the time. I mentioned how KRS One disrespected her and the whole Juice Crew with the bridges over, which was during the Bridge Wars. But I didn't mention that Roxanne Shante and KRS One actually ran into each other at a bank not long after KRS One dropped the bridges over, and she confronted him in person. She revealed this during a uh, Vlad interview. So it's and it's actually in this interview where she supports the claim that KRS One and Scott LaRock wanted to be in the Juice Crew, and Mr. Magic told him they were garbage. So, and not even just garbage, but allegedly he literally broke their record in half. Uh, but Roxanne Shantae caught KRS one lacking at the bank and ran up on him and confronted him, to which he apologized to her face. And I guess they were cool since then, but that's how personal she took the diss, and that's how real hip hop was for her and others, and it still is today. The the phrase deeper than rap comes to mind, and we see it. Uh, today and it's even led to people dying unfortunately but thankfully not in in the the bridge war cases I've, I've discussed in a previous video which i'll leave a link to that either in the description or one of them little caption things you feel me but besides her involvement in the bridge wars uh and roxanne's revenge creating a wave of response records that you know fizzled out kind of quick but it did have its time roxanne shantae was a fierce battle rapper and really, I'm, I'm underselling her abilities by calling her fierce. In 1985, Roxanne Shantae entered a contest in New York called the MC Battle for World Supremacy. And I've looked all over. I've scoured the internet for an official bracket or anything from this to even see who all was in this thing. But apparently, it was a huge deal in the hip-hop community at the time. And the winner even got a, a belt and a fancy steak dinner. Curtis Blow and DJ Red Alert were among the panel of like they had I believe four judges and it had a tournament structure to it you know you beat somebody you move on and at the time and even today Roxanne Shantae doesn't really consider herself a battle rapper she kind of explained she never wanted to intentionally disrespect anybody 
or anything like that but she saw this as an opportunity of a lifetime so at 15 years old she entered the mc battle for world supremacy and, and keep in mind she's the only girl there too everybody else a, a man a, goddamn and she's a, a 15 year old girl definitely got the odds stacked against her no everyone probably thought yeah this girl's about to get you know first rounded type shit 30 you know but according to everybody that was there that day roxanne shantae fucking demolished the competition murdered him son verbally you feel me and i mean there's even a recording of her versus busy b in the finals and i listened to it it's on youtube i highly recommend checking it out but Roxanne Shantae won hands down and let me just say the battle format they had back then was crazy as fuck and, and not in a good way and in, in the worst way like it's like oh everybody's so creative look you know that's different yeah it's it was that bad it was like they would go back and forth and they would count out each other's bars so it's definitely way different than the battle rap format that then we see today with the three rounds and however many minutes it goes pretty much some leagues have instrumentals most leagues don't but yeah i mean she she murdered everybody that was there that day and and nobody really expected it right but either way roxanne shantae 30 him why especially I, I went back and listened to it she clearly won hands down but because she was a 15 year old girl and hip-hop was just in its infancy and was trying to be taken seriously as a genre, Curtis Blow, of all people, shorted her on points. So Busy B won. And Roxanne Shantae was robbed in front of everyone. Because in Curtis Blow's mind, if hip-hop was going to be taken seriously, the best MC couldn't be a 15-year-old girl. So while everyone else gave Roxanne a 9 or a 10, Curtis Blow gave her a 4. And she lost the title by two points to Busy B. B the same Busy B Starsky, who now to me will forever be the guy who got killed verbally by Cool Modi and then stole the title from a 15 year old girl who beat him just as bad as Cool Modi did, if, if not worse. Because I mean, it was a 15 year old girl. And if social media existed back then, Busy B would definitely be a meme rapper for show for show. He would de he would you know, definitely not have a good stand. He don't even have a good standing with me as I'm learning about this hip hop history. I'm just like, man, fuck this guy. And he he did nothing to me. And he it's none of it's through really no fault of his own. Cool Mo D was an ambush and it's not like he made the judges, you know, screw uh Roxanne Shantae out of the title, but it's like, damn, bruh. You really caught some unlucky breaks to make you hated, <laughs> but no, but for real, uh, big ups to Busy, uh, Busy B Starsky, a, a legend and a pioneer in the hip hop game, but he definitely did get murdered by Cool Modi and Roxanne Shantae. Now it, it's pretty much known and common knowledge that Roxanne was robbed though, and it, it it's even further cemented her legacy as a woman pioneer in hip hop and definitely deserves to be on that Mount Rushmore that I was talking about earlier. And now Roxanne Shantae and MC Shaw Rock were woman MCs that could go bar for bar with men of their era, but the next two ladies really weren't concerned with competing with the guys because they decided to use and embrace their femininity and their, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, I cannot pronounce that to save my life, but their femininity and their sexuality to create their own lane and wave. And little did they know they would set a whole new trend and create a whole new style that has evolved a lot over the years. But Salt and Peppa definitely set the tone and the bar for sexually explicit lyrics for their day by women. I mean, we had the two live crew and they were way more raunchy for the era, but the way Salt and Peppa did it was just different. Like they definitely had a different kind of style and hits. Plus, they influenced Lil' Kim, Foxy Brown, Aaliyah, TLC. I mean, those four names alone have influenced countless R&B artists and female MCs alike. So their roots in hip-hop are firmly planted. Push It, uh, Shoop, Let's Talk About Sex. Those are classic records. And, and they pushed the envelope of how female artists were perceived at the time and could be perceived at the time. Unfortunately... It seems that them and their longtime DJ, DJ Spinderella, 
they've f- fell out over the last you know few years in issues relating to money and, and royalties and it kind of I mean the way it looks from the outside looking in kind of seems like they're trying to erase Spinderella from the group's history they trying to erase a key figure from the story of salt and pepper spinderella was responsible for all three of those hits i just named and she was completely left out of their biopic which is unfortunate because the three of them helped pave the way for so many women in music they even won a grammy in 95 and became the first female rap act to win a grammy along with queen latifah who won literally in the same night so that there goes that i mean it's not like they were late or anything like that they you know were, they were the first kind of you know queen queen up there with them too and speaking of queen latifah you could throw her up there with salt and pepper as she became the first solo woman rapper to win a grammy plus she's had very successful jazz albums and of course is a phenomenal actress her body of work in that field speaks for itself and plus she dissed Lil' Kim on wax and low-key murdered the fuck out of her. So it's it's known not to fuck with the queen. You feel me? The last woman I'm going to discuss on this list, though, is MC Light, who was the first woman MC to record an album. And and that was in, back in 1988, Light as a Rock. And it actually hit Billboard, got to number 50 on Billboard's first woman to drop an album and hit the Billboard. You already know. Uh, while we got, you know, Queen Latifah and Shaw Rock there, you know, Shaw Rock is known as the mother of the mic. MC Light is known as the queen of rap. And with Just Cause, because although she may not have the mainstream appeal or accolades, or maybe not have the mainstream um, attention like others, MC Light's style actually influenced Queen Latifah Eve, Flo Millie, and even the great Missy Elliott. So, you gotta salute MC Light. And all the other women I mentioned in this video, they really are all pioneers in their own right. And, I mean, they helped hip-hop progress to where it is today, especially in in the uh, superstar aspect. I mean, I'm gonna get to Lil' Kim a little bit later on. She did come a little bit later in the 90s. I don't really consider her a pioneer, but she was... I would consider her maybe the first superstar if we keeping it all the way 100. I mean, Bad Boy was that popping back in the day, but we'll get to that in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, R.I.P. to Sylvia Robinson. Uh, although Sugar Hill Records did fuck over a lot of mainstream artists, it did, or a lot of artists, I should say, it did help hip-hop break into the mainstream. So, gotta give her credit there. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you don't, why didn't you you know leave a comment on why maybe leave a dislike if you liked it though leave a like and a comment on why too you know either way don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification so you can stay tuned on all the hot content i got dropping soon it's been your boy ant i'm out peace <laughs>